Man, oh man, this might be it, y'all. You know, this ain't one of these Nintendo Death Watch videos waiting for Nintendo to crash as a company. No, this is me saying this is it. This might be, this is the end of Nintendo as we know it. I don't think they're going back to home console at all. You know? And it's sad. And people were like, well, graphics don't have to matter on everything. We, we, we know that. But Nintendo has a history of not playing well with third-party companies. Why do you think the Wii U was a failure? There was no third-party games on it. And to a degree, Nintendo can't do it by themselves. We had this whole impression that they were doing it by themselves and everything was just peachy keen. But look how Nintendo has been doing it. Nintendo is no better than Sony and Microsoft. Okay? Their crappy yearly service, their monthly service, uh, DLC, microtransactions... They are no better. And this is how they've been staying afloat. Now, this is not me saying Nintendo's guilty only. But this is me saying a lot of Nintendo fanboys are hypocrites. When it comes to this whole thing about how Nintendo is. And this might be the, this might be the curtain call for Nintendo. Let's just admit that the Switch is technically the successor to the ds and nintendo don't really want to move into the console field anymore and why i say this is because money reasons nintendo is relying on nintendo more than anything there's not a lot of third-party games coming out for it and when they do they're very niche like JRPGs, let's be honest, as much as you might like JRPGs, they don't sell consoles to the gamers or the casual gamers. That's what I mean. It don't really sell to the casual gamers. It sells to those who are niche fans. And the casual gamers don't stick around. If that was the case, the Wii wouldn't have seen significant drop-offs when it came to Wii U coming out. No, people got tired of the Wii. It ran its course. It sold 250-something million, almost 300 million units, maybe, I believe. Somewhere around that amount. It sold a lot. Maybe I'm exaggerating. My memory, it's been a while. But they sold a plethora of them. And the Wii U bombed hard because of the whole thing with third-party games. And let's take a look back into Nintendo's history. We know Nintendo is very anti-consumer. But people's nostalgia has blocked that from being something that is accepted in the minds of their fan base. Well, their hardcore fan base, that is. I'm a fan, but let's just keep it a buck here. Let's keep it a buck here. Nintendo has been anti-consumer. Ask Sega Master System. They'll tell you. Ask Sega when they, the Master System dropped. How anti-consumer um, Nintendo was. Threatening other retailers. Threatening retailers. If you sell any of our competitors' stuff, we will pull our support completely. That is true. Okay? Ask about the whole seal of quality and the money involved with Nintendo and how they took so much from people and how much the licensing fees were to put on a seal that was ultimately meaningless. This is what they told a lot of their third party developers. This is what it's going to take to have a game on Nintendo, the hottest console out right now. So, going forth, Nintendo started realizing the competition started getting fiercer, right? Sony, whew, Sony devastated them. Sega 
took a chunk out of them. Didn't beat them, took a significant chunk out of them. And ultimately, after the GameCube, well, 64 was pretty much the beginning of a really bad era for Nintendo. We all know that. You can look up other people's videos and know that the 64 era, Virtual Boy, all that, those were big misses with Nintendo. But the problem I had with Nintendo was Nintendo is no better. They, they aren't no better. They rely on way too many niche games and their fan base will just take the abuse. I'm not taking the abuse. You're not going to keep repackaging games for me to buy over and over again. You're not going to just put out games for limited gameplay time, expect me to pay full retail, and then years later you want to repackage it again and I have to pay over and over again. This is bullshit. It's bullshit. And I'm disappointed in the fans who support this nonsense. You always tell people vote with their wallets, right? And their fans have chosen to say, hey, we like abuse. We do. But y'all be the first ones in the Microsoft and Sony comment sections and the PC sections blasting them for not putting up with this or try trying to throw cells into the face of everything. I'm... I'm <sighs> I don't know what to say. I really don't think there's going to be a Switch Pro. Sorry. Sorry, Switch fans. It's not going. I got my Switch. I'm sitting looking at it right now. There's not going to be a Pro to me. I will be shocked. Hell, I'm still waiting for Bayonetta 3. Where the fuck are they? I made a video about that. People got upset. Oh, man. Anyway, y'all. Uh, I think I truly, once again, think this is it. They're going to ride and ride and ride the success until the wheels fall off. Rather than going into waters again that they went into. And it's a guy who brings... I shout out the Knowledge Hub. Look up Knowledge Hub's video. Nintendo is an awful company now. And that's nothing new. That's the name of the video. Look up Knowledge Hub and look up that video. He speaks it exactly the way I wish I can speak it, and he breaks it down. I've known about Nintendo's past, how terrible they were of a company and still are. They just dressed it up for the casuals. Then the casuals abandoned them. Then they struck success again by going into being a niche console. It's true. I've said this before, but on the, I have such a small platform that Nintendo has become a niche company. And the nostalgia of their name and their characters is what keeps them afloat. And for me, who's not a nostalgic person, meaning like, oh my God, I owe everything to them and stuff. Yes, I've had very fond memories of Sega as well. But you don't see me sitting here crying about Sega. Sega bowed out of the market. They couldn't compete anymore and stay in a healthy range. So they bowed out and became a developer. And then that went to shit too. I'm not going to sit here and cry about the, the good old years. But a lot of Nintendo's fan base, their nostalgic fans, can't see Nintendo for what they are now. All they see is what they was. And before I go, let's not forget about the whole thing about Nintendo pulling things from retail and from physical. Super Mario 35 pulled. Uh, Mario Maker pulled last month. There's, it, it's like, first off, you sell things. You make a lot of your products very hard to come by, to create buzz for it you don't put enough of them out there and then you pull them and then maybe years down the line you make them available again just so people can buy them banking on 
the whole nostalgia aspect of everything. You just you this is what Nintendo does over and over and over again. There's a whole cycle of it. Of making games available, making products like game and watch, things of that nature, available for a limited amount of time, not putting enough out there, not stopping the scalpers as well. And then once you start making a certain amount of something, uh, people just basically go crazy once you release it down the market again. It's like perfect storm of technique when it comes to making people want and continue interest in the product that they didn't have a snowball's chance of hell of getting out there because you purposely made it that way just to keep people interested in the same product rather than moving forward and making something new you just regurgitate stuff over and over and over again i'm done with it this is the real reason why i stopped playing call of duty it was the same thing over and over again so this is not me being biased. And a lot of certain franchises I stopped playing because I lost interest in playing monotonous games. Well, yeah, of course, there's going to be sequels. But when the sequels start jumping the shark, here's looking at you, Village. Okay? Seven and Village, like uh, those Resident Evils, jumping the shark. When things start doing that way too much, I'm like, bruh. Like, do I really want to move on? Give me something good. You gave me something just different. That's what I felt with Resident Evil. But back on the whole Nintendo thing. This is what they have capitalized on. The whole FOMO. Fear of missing out. And they purposely made you miss out. So they can pull something say that's not being made no more. And then they know they got you gears down the line or wherever they want to put it out. They're not consumer friendly. They don't want to put it on their virtual market or the e-shop. None of that. They don't want to do that. They want you to be ready to spend $60 again when they drop it a couple years from now. And then maybe it'd be limited. They don't want it. They they don't want you to be a one and done with their products. They want to perpe- they want to perpetually drain your wallets. And people think Microsoft and Sony are terrible. <laughs> Nintendo's the OG of it. Ah oh, man, cause I'm a fury. I'm out. Peace.